back. You're watching Weekend World. I'm Huma Amir Shah, and that was an explosive performance by Podrum. I'm sure you must have liked him. Now, my next guest, um, I'll tell you something about him. We put up his name online on Twitter and on our Facebook page, uh, just, you know, telling people, letting people know that he's going to be on our show. And man, the response. I mean, I have not seen that kind of response uh, about any other guest, I, I can say safely. Um, of course, you know who I'm talking about. He is a Punjabi rapper. He's a music producer. He actually really gave birth to a new genre of music, Desi Hip Hop, as well. Uh, he has come in all the way from California just to be on my show. I promise you, yes. Please welcome Bohemia. Hi. Hi, Homa. Thank you How for having you? me. Very good. I'm sorry. I took it along a little forward and said you came here just for my show. Uh, but it, uh, it's it, awesome to have you here. You have a huge fan following. It's accurate to an extent. Uh, when I met you uh, uh, at the last show, uh, unexpectedly, I was actually uh, planning to head back. Oh, all right. Um, but then I saw your show and decided to stay back. And Lovely. I'm and very glad. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are going to have a good uh, chance to chat now. Uh, Bohemia, the last time I met you there, uh, everybody was curious about your name as well. And uh, somebody asked you, I remember, and you said Bohemia. And they said, full name Bohemia, the Punjabi rapper. Nothing came before or after that, but I have discovered that Bohemia's name is Roger David, but he's one of those people who actually kind of renamed himself. How many of you get the chance? Why Bohemia? I think we all get a chance to do that at, in, uh, in our childhood. Um, as, as, as children, we are so much more ambitious, and we, we dream. And, and, you know, I remember having all kinds of names and characters that I was. At, at, at some point, I thought I was a reincarnation of Mirza Ghalib. Oh, wow. At some point, I thought I, was, I danced just like Michael Jackson when mm -hmm. I was like <laughs> seven or eight. But I think as we grow old, um, certain traditions and consistencies of society force us to, um, uh, you know, this, there's cert certain positivity that's attached to being consistent mm. and search, you know, you're older and, you know, you, you do it at a certain time mm. and how dare uh, it didn't happen at a certain mm. time. And, and it's such notion of being an adult is attached to being consistent. Um, whereas I think I'm, I'm still a, a child at heart. <laughs> <laughs> I grow up and I think I'm a character. I think I'm Bohemia. Hmm. I think I've been created by this energy that I love hmm. that's known as hip-hop culture. Um, rap music is representation of that culture. Hmm. Um, that's the culture that's given me the, uh, the identity that I have. So, Bohemia, let's, let's go back a little bit. Now, you were born in Karachi. Um, okay. And you uh, did not uh, live in Karachi for that long. You were still a child when you moved abroad. Yeah, I was... Uh, six or seven when my dad my dad used to work for a PIA okay. um, he started a, just like a pantry man at PIA International Pakistan International Airlines and hmm. then he graduated himself and he taught himself and, he, and then eventually he got transferred to Peshawar seven eight at the age of seven or eight I end up in Peshawar hmm. uh, and then I stayed there till about 13 or 14 when right. I straight went to California. From Peshawar to California. From Peshawar to California. So my memory of Peshawar, my memory of Karachi is very, you know, when I think of Karachi, I remember my mom. Hmm. Um, being really young. I mean, very, very, just, just, just glimpse. Hmm, flashes. You hmm. know, But um, Peshawar, I remember a little more Intimately, I, I remember becoming a, a sort of a young teen almost, hmm. having friends and just the beauty and just the, the freshness of the city. Mm -hmm. And I, I, if I may add, because um, you don't live here, you visit, I live here, times have also changed. I've lived in Peshawar myself as well yeah. when I was very little. Uh, and those were good times. Peshawar yeah. was beautiful, heaven. It still is, but mm -hmm. it's, or rather, anywhere else in Pakistan is not as safe as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So things have uh, kind of moved on. So mm. you went to California after that. Uh, now my question is that you keep uh, coming back to Pakistan. You are huge in Pakistan and the rest of the world as well. But what brings you back to Pakistan? You didn't really spend that much time here to be so attached. Mm -hmm. But what is it that you know keeps, uh, makes you come back? Um, I think um, 
I um, was here for a very sensitive time of my age. You know, just those from what I remember from 11, 12, 13, almost 14 years of age. Um, it was what happened, the first thing that happened to me when I went to San Francisco Mission District, Bay Area, California. That's where I have lived ever since. Mm -hmm. um, that's where my music is born, I believe. Um, I lost my mom. I lost her. And that's where I think I kind of like lost a connection with everyone else. I was such a, so close to my mom that my relationship with my family, everybody. So when I lost her, it was a, I left home and everything, you know, at, the, mm. at that age, I was 16 and just left, I left school mm. at, at the, in the ninth grade I, I, I was supposed to finish. So I was pretty much homeless without no education and pretty much no relatives and close friends, so to speak. Mm. So it was a rebirth. I had to, I thought I wasn't going to live that much longer. Mm -hmm. So my, my core fans relate to me for that fact that I'm so uh, unhypocrite with my music and my lyrics that mm -hmm. I, I tell them all that, I share all that. So I think the attachment, your question is, is, is that when I think of Karachi, I think of my mother, I think of, um, I think of uh, a lost connection, mm. um, you know, and um, I think of uh, something that I want to, that I want, but mm. that was kind of taken away from me. Right. Um, so is, is it, uh, and if I may ask, is it since then that you have been writing poetry? Um, my, uh, as Bohemia, the content that my, I have share, shared with my fans, yes. Uh, before that, I have written extensively, I shouldn't say extensively, but a, a bit um, as a fan of Urdu Shairi, mm. uh, although I'm so bad at it. I have tried writing in Urdu, but what I, what I have shared with my fans is my Punjabi content. Mm -hmm. That comes more naturally to you? That comes more naturally, that comes more bluntly, that comes more, like I said, I think there's no hypocrisy when I write. Mm. Um, I think there's a lot of notion attached to youth not, you know, listening uh, to adults and not going to school and not listening to their teachers. And I'm hearing about how, you know, teachers are having to carry guns, uh, dealing with these youth. Whereas it's surprising to me that I perform in clubs, I perform at places where people are just, youth is so wild, mm. and I'm yet to carry a single gun. Mm. And I'm yet to have a. I'm in Pakistan right now, mm -hmm. and my entire family and everybody's in California. Mm -hmm. And I landed here by myself. And ever since, I came to your show right now by myself. There's not a single guard with me right now. Mm -hmm. so, so it's just such a notion of, um, you know, and, and youth listens to me. You know, I get, a, I get a thousands of kids, whether I'm in Hindustan or Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And they, um, they come and they listen to me. And they, 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 they annoy a lot of bodyguards and bouncers and they jump on them. And, mm. But that, that's nothing to do, they have, there's no negative energy attached to it. They listen to me, they remember, they recite my lyrics better than I do. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I just tweeted a video of kids wanting me to rap while I was sitting in Daria town. And you can tell in the video, I'm asking them, hey, how does the song start? And that's generally me having them remind me because yeah. I don't I don't recall and and you can hear at least seven of them start mm -hmm. rapping right away so I think the notion of that is it has to do with maybe the teachers and the adults are not uh, I have a little bit of job to do which relates to a tweet that I sent out a while back and I said that you know uh, a good um, uh, teacher um, you know thinks everyone's a student but a good student knows that everyone's a teacher. Mm, so I that's think right. a lot of teachers need to learn us too. A lot mm -hmm. of teachers need to learn the youth too, and that's uh, that's and that's where I kind of beat them, you know. And and, and you're very passionate about it because you also uh, wrote, I, I suppose, and sang this in Coke Studio as well. You were talking yes. about uh, School Di Kitab. And all your raps, I'm not very familiar with the genre, I do listen to it, but I, uh, that wouldn't be my first choice, I'm sorry, but still, it's very educational. I mean, people, 
associated with a lot of uh, language issues obviously are there as well uh, people who don't haven't really heard it don't like it at all without even hearing it so there are a lot of misconceptions uh, preconceived notions attached to it to rapping mm -hmm. as well but listening to you um, it doesn't feel that way at all but is it the good side of rapping and then there is the wild side of rapping as well is there a divide see rapping my music is a, such a medicine that you don't want to take unless you have uh, the disease so to speak kind of like if I don't have a headache and if I just pop in them headache pills be sure they're gonna make me feel sick hmm. um, then you got problems where you do have a headache and you take that medicine and then you get addicted to it so right. I have a lot of fans that are that are that I've sort of gen uh, grown this cult that is addicted to it. They have no longer have the headache. They just have hmm. the the dependency on my on my potent music and realistic approach to my writing and delivery hmm. and everything. So it has nothing to do with music. I think music is um, a, a, a highway, a lane, a road that I take to my fans. Other than that. You know, they give me awards and nominate me. I don't show up. <laughs> really? Um, I, I don't have no... But that, that is uh, recognition uh, No, of recognition what you do. is not what I'm in it for. I never was, man. I was never wanted to be an MC. I never wanted to be on stage. I mm. never wanted to... The um, only time I pick up a phone and I show up is when my fans call me. And then cert at a certain time when I used to talk to my dad about this happening, and then he used to say, well... You're different, you know, you're different. And I didn't get what he was trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I get it. And the point being is that my life experience is such drastic. Right. And being a son of Karachi, lived in Peshawar and raised by my Pathan, loyal, lovely, diehard friends and fans, mm. to being in California where I had to deal with a bunch of um, so-called uh, you know, hip hop stars, and they think they were so much better than mm -hmm. us or me, and 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 and, and uh, gaining an identity now that's worldwide. And I got that is something that we will talk about in just a bit. But talking of your fans, uh, as I was saying before, you even showed up. We had so much, so many messages uh, from your fans. Uh, there is Charat Lakra from India. He is asking you, sir, what about India? as in when you are going there. Ahmed Hassan, please, uh, they asked me to ask you about uh, your plans for Bollywood, upcoming projects, and marriage. Very much interested in marriage as well. Mishi Ramiz uh, wrote to us and said, if you could please uh, sing your song, Be Parva, from your album, Thousand Thoughts. Uh, then there was Imran Chaudh. I, I, I really, there are so many names. I shouldn't um, even take them. Uh, I love India. I, my, India, you know, when I consider myself part of music, um, you know, I, I got into music as a businessman, not mm. as a rapper or a musician or, you know, so-called want to be the star or award-winning celebrity. But you, you, so you can't deny I, I got it, into I mean, for the business of it to, to instill this energy into the youth that you could be a homeless mm. kid right. and then get up and buy a home on the same street. So that's what I, you know, that's what Is that I what talk to you about. As well? That's what I've done, ma'am. Mm. Yeah, I recently just got a text that there's kids outside cutting my lawn right now in California. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I used to be a teenager homeless where I was hoping maybe I can get a job as a, as a guy who, cut, who would cut a lawn maybe and, and make a couple of bucks. But now I have guys cutting my lawn. Mm. And that's the energy that my fans, that I, that, that I, that I project to my fans. Right. And that's, you know, and I talk about buying my dad a car. You know, I talk about doing these things for my family and friends. And that's the point. It's not about being on stage and, you know, being a celebrity and thinking mm. I have so many likes on some virtual page or I got so many uh, views that I bought. I'm not into none of that. I've never spent a dime promoting myself, whether it's online mm -hmm. or anywhere. But the, then again, you are very lucky to be doing what you want to do. And being recognized yes. for it. Yes, I am, but I think I, I want to remind you that it that comes, um, uh, you know, from from being obedient and respectful to to your art. And I mm. think uh, I've spent an extensive amount of time of my life doing that. I mean, mm. you listen to my songs, 
watch mm -hmm. my videos and you think that this dude just kind of hangs out and you know like he has a great life and right now he's probably in a club i don't go out clubs man i don't okay, go then, out by the way, that uh, uh, rapper lifestyle is something that we will be talking about but we have to go on a break and but before the break i would really like you to perform something you're here we are not going to let you go just like that so um anything what what comes to your mind i a song that that i did just uh, for my dad it's a dedication to his most favorite singer Malka Dharan Madam Noor Jahan ji her album Dil Ka Jaani Dil Da Jaani uh, the song was called Ek Tera Pyaar I had done a re sort of revamping of it all right. in my style okay. I like to perform that Lovely thing. please shout out to my dad All right take it away I'm sure he must be watching he's in California mm -hmm. Okay we are reaching in California as well so that's good Rag rag chupi jo tu mangi ho main kara tere baat. 